right, we're kicking things off here for round number nine, and both players are uh, X11, starting to really lose those all-important lifelines as they approach day two. So, going to be really uh, desperate to win this one, I think. And it's uh, looking like a good start from Ludger here, who's got those dragon cards that have been around for oh so long, and uh, have been a classic part and repertoire of the Dragon Link Arsenal, still running those rocket monsters. You're a, you're a big fan of this deck, Nadir, right? I've seen you, you, you picked it up yourself, playing with it. I've played it through all of its iterations, from Halka Fibrax and Smoke Grenade, all the way down to where we are now with uh, I don't know. No More. It seems yeah. like Ludger is a little nervous because he just drew six cards for his opening hand, which is, uh, of course, not the number of cards he was supposed to have there. Because in the end, who did even win the die roll? I think Lucas actually did up win, end up winning, right? Yeah, yeah Lucas did win. Uh, maybe not. Star. So Lucas looks. Yeah, Lucas is about to. Yeah, Lucas is indeed about to start, and he's getting mad in love as he's summoning Doctor Mad Love there. First Vanquish Soul card, which is going to grab him a spell or trap card from the archetype. I think as a as a starting card for Lucas, it's probably quite a long way down the list of what you want to start with, right? Because he's got all of his super heavy samurai cards, so there are six possible kind of starters for that being the three motorbikes and the three Wakauchis. And he's also got three Soul Rasen, which again is kind of preferable to opening up with the Mad Love. So this is like yeah, starter number <laughs> starter number seven in yeah, order. Yeah, you maybe. really need the Raisin. Access to Raisin is crucial for Vanquish Soul, and there wasn't any, and therefore he's just passing it over after searching out the Dust Devil, probably setting that card. And now Lucas immediately going for the Book of Moon effect of the Dust Devil there to book that safer. But I can tell you, Dragon Link, since the beginning of days, has been playing through one or two interruptions with E, so I would not be surprised if he can do it here again. Yeah, there's I'm a lot of uh, way to extend in Dragon Link from Quick Launch to Chaos Space, although now limited. Uh, there's a lot of just other cards that work really well here. We can see from his hand he's actually uh, got... There's nothing. A, oh. Yeah, neither. They, they look like Chaos Space, yeah. but wow, it's not actually Chaos Space. That is so space. untypical for the Dragon Link strategy. That one Book of Moon was enough to completely shut him down there. I feel like now with the, with the limit to Chaos Space, it can happen a lot more frequently. Especially if your opponent doesn't give you any lights or darks in the graveyard. You really do notice it as you play the deck because very slowly and consistently over like multiple years now the deck has been losing uh, ways <laughs> to uh, actually start the engine and you know two more chaos space don't forget Magnemut as well now at two just less and less ways to really help you extend so looks like we're gonna go for the Link One here one of the uh, strongest cards in the archetype I mean Link Ones in general feed really well into the strategy. Yeah, but it is Rock of the Vanquisher, and that immediately is going to use its effect to add that Dr. Madlove back to the hand of Lucas. So, still no light or dark monsters there in the graveyard, right? Yeah, I think that's going to be one of the uh, less fortunate aspects of running Beasteals. Um, they're quite around throughout all of the metagame, but in this deck, and this archetype, not too common to have darks in the graveyard often, especially when you're recycling with the Rock. But, I mean, that looked like a pretty desperate play, didn't it? I think in Ludgar's hand, he has one base deal. I would have definitely considered to go after that Dr. Madlove there, because that would have left Lucas with only the Rock of the Vanquisher on the field. And now he has the uh, two monsters, and he also gets to add back the... or to add the continue for the first time here. Yeah, yeah. that's an interesting point. He did... He, has he got a base deal in Yeah, yeah he, he got, got a Bruce 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 Bruce. yeah. A big downside, again, of not starting with the Super Heavy Samurai Engine is now none of the cards really work the way you want to because you've already put a spell in your graveyard. So I can see the Soul Piercer in the hand of Lucas, and fetching a Super Heavy Samurai card now feels like it isn't really going to achieve much. Ooh, but it seems like we are now ourselves going to use base deals, and therefore it pays off for Lutka to hold his own Druzebone because that will deny Lucas access to his Magna Mood, and now again there are no lights or darks in the graveyard anymore, so that Magna Mood is not going to be able to use its effect soon. It's really uh, interesting that he chose to hold it. You know, I was thinking, is this like a misstep or something? But good chance maybe he was playing around something like Thrust or Talents, and it actually paid off as we were able to dodge the opponent's Magna Mood. Ooh, and immediately now he has a monster on the field to use Shadow's Light. And honestly, that is not a very, very popular card in, in the deck, but it has been a recent addition to the deck with Battle of Legends, Monstrous Revenge, and therefore we do activate it. Oh, that's... Okay, we are chaining the effect of Dr. Madlove, though. And it's just going to go straight back to the hand. Indeed. Shadow's Light not going to resolve? 
We will have to double read on Shadow's Light, but it seems yeah, like it's, that's uh, the case. It's special as a light from the deck actually with the same original type and level, so if you don't have one on the field, then I guess it will just resolve without effect there. Totally. So we also get to Ash V Talons, which was meant to draw cards and therefore is uh, being met with the Ash Blossom, but there has been normal summon of the Tracer now, so this time it looks like Lutka has some more potential to extend here at least. What? Uh, yeah, you can't use the second copy of Shadow's Light, I don't think, so what's the, what's the plan? I mean, we also probably have access to Boot Sector launch, so maybe go into Striker Dragon, summon back the Rocket Tracer, go into Romulus, well, search ourselves a, a Dragon uh, Ravine. Magnamut as well, though, that's the thing. Oh, you're <laughs> so right, yeah. Our, we, we managed to get our Druid's Worm back as well, so we're going to see some Deja, deja Vu. So, ooh, we just used the effect of Tracer, destroyed itself to bring out the Calibre, so... That also, of course, would end up having uh, bringing two monsters to the field, but one of them then is not a striker dragon anymore in that scenario. Yeah, I like that. I mean, he's already drawn the boot sector launch, so there's much Oh, he has it already. I see, to, uh, I see. To make the striker dragon. You're right, you're right. So maybe we're going to see a boot sector and then, a, and then try and interrupt it with a magnum and then the Druid's Worm. So there is the boot sector. And Lucas, is he going to respond to it? I think there is no point in responding right away, but as soon as he uses the effect, it seems like a worthy Magna Moot. Oh, definitely. Or Drew's Womb. <laughs> well, it's going to be both. So, he Magna is... activates in the hand, targeting the Rocket Tracer. We chain our own Drew's Worm, and it looks like we're going to have a <laughs> bit of a bestial another? fight yeah. here. Yeah. One, two, three, all the bestials in the house, but the one from Lucas is going to end up resolving, banishing the Tracer ultimately. And I think Lutka from there on cannot really do anything anymore. Yeah, it, he's not really open that well, you know, there's not a lot of power spells or extenders there, like the quick launch and stuff, yeah. so it looks like uh, he's going to go into the battle phase and attack over the rock, but protection is utilized. Yeah, you can't attack rock with the Vanquisher while you control, I think, while you control a Vanquish soul or something like that. It says, um, da -da -da -da, your opponent's monster can only target monsters you control with the highest attack, so he would only be able to attack the Druid Swarm. There we go. All right, this is the most important part of the uh, engine here. Raisin has been finally, picked up. Finally, finally, Raisin is there. This is the heart and soul of the Vanquish Soul deck, mm. and um, he yeah. really finally, even though it's already a good position for him, finally gets this card onto the field. Yeah, we got the Vanquish Soul cards, but next we'll get the Vanquish Hearts. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe the Vanquish Heart cards are actually the super heavy cards. <laughs> Maybe they have super heavy hearts. <laughs> you, you don't know, right? Do you think he's already shown the super heavy cards. I don't, I don't think he'll mind showing uh, another one here. Okay, now the Raisin effect going to reveal a fire monster and a dark monster destroying the Rocket Caliber. Yeah, so I think what we might see here is just the special summon of the Magnemut as well on our own turn, and then you just have enough damage here well, to... Well, 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 that Druid's Worm is still in the hand. <laughs> It true, absolutely true. is. This can, is going to happen again, again, and it. again, and again. And there's not really any way you can organize this so that your magma beats their Druid's Worm because it's not a quick effect. The thing is, we have Dr. Madlove on the field, which is also a quick effect. So as soon as he summons out the Druid's Worm, we can then just take care of it with the Dr. Madlove if we have the requiring attributes in our hand to reveal. And I think we have plenty of those at the moment. Yeah, it looks like he's got a big fistful of monsters. So also maybe the potential if he summons his own Druze where maybe we can uh, go into some sort of Chaos Angel play. I think if you just activate the Magnum now and then that, that should force out your opponent's Druze Worm and as Basti suggested then you can just bounce it back to your opponent's hand. Yeah, a lot of different ways to address this. Vanquishol actually proving itself to be quite a versatile deck. You know, you can incorporate so many different engines. Uh, we can see here obviously Bestial is putting in a lot of work specifically against Dragon Link but there's also the Super Heavies, a main portion of this deck here. Okay, okay, so now finally also for Ludger, there is going to be a dragon resolving. We are immediately going to bounce it back to the hand, and I think that's a lot of damage on the field. Ooh, the Valius, is it going to stay oh, on the field or not? Oh, yeah, you've got to be careful here, because uh, the Mad Love bounces whichever monster has the highest defense points. So I'm not sure of the defense of the Soul Valius, but maybe it's too much? The so, uh, return one oh, monster with defense. the lowest defense on yeah, the field no, to the hand. That's not Druid's Worm, that's Soul Valleys. That's pretty interesting, man. So we get to reveal for three effects this time. Maybe Soul Valleys is going to pop itself. <laughs> Dr. Madlove. Druid's Worm. What are we end up doing here? <laughs> we kind of played into our own trap there. <laughs> 
So, okay, we are going to end up destroying the Druze Swarm. That will trigger its effect, though, going after the Druze Swarm as well. So, I think Lucas is losing access to ending the game here this turn. Yeah, he has still got the continue in his graveyard, but I don't think there's any way. That summons a monster in defense mode, which is not so helpful when you want to attack your opponent. Yeah, also, currently there are no Vanquish Soul monsters in the graveyard, right? But if uh, we yeah. end up giving Ludger another turn and... Do we know, or do you yeah, normal we summon? already normal summon the Raza. I don't know if we use the effect of rock. Yeah. Okay, so now there is the Raisin. Looks like it's going to be a measly 3,000. We could also have the option to go into a rank 4 here, now that we have the Mad Love and the Raisin there. And I mean, looking for his list, I see there's, for example, the Battling Boxer, King Dempsey. I don't know, that's probably like the connection point of the Super Heavy Samurai and the Vanquish Soul stuff. Don't know whether you want to get into your Super Heavy Samurai stuff right now, though. But we also, of course, can go for Springen's Merrymaker, which is being summoned here, which might as well be the way to get into our gigantic champion sagas. And that, and of course, is going to add ourselves the Ethereum King Regulus to our hands. So as you mentioned, you mentioned the Dempsey before. Uh, that's a great way to make use of your Super Heavy Samurai engine. But also, if you already have the Soul Rosin, then you can go ahead and add a Therion King Regulus this way. Okay, and I mean, that combo from Merrymaker into Sagas into the Regulus is not only giving you the Regulus, but also is gi it's giving you potential Zeus with four materials, which is just huge. And there he is. The connection of this deck between all the various archetypes it has is honestly quite phenomenal. I'm really impressed with just how much this thing synergizes into uh, various other archetypes. Bestials, uh, Spring Gans for the uh, Machine, and the Regulus, the Therian. Uh, the deck works out really quite well. Yeah, I like it as well, for sure. I think the, the main downside, downside, though, is if you only draw like one part of them. If you like have one Vanquish Soul and then like only Dark Monsters or something, you just don't get to combine them very well. But if you have multiple engines available, it's just outstanding for sure. But that is also an outstanding top deck there from Ludger picking up the quick launch. But still he's staring down that four material Zeus, which is also quite amazing. And the Magnemut, which has been in the hand since the beginning of time at this point. It's, it's had a good, good day in his Absolutely. hand. Absolutely. So Tracer back to the field, numero dos. I think he just activated the field. Yeah, he's going to go and summon out another monster from the main deck here. Is it time for Recharger, perhaps? Probably. Should be his only target left there at this point. And there it is, Rocket yeah. Recharger. I do love the, uh, oh, the the audacity to summon it in attack mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is quite fun, isn't it? I, I don't think it's uh, going to make too much of a difference. Yeah, he's, Probably he's, not. He's, he's quite behind here, especially drawing multiple cards like Shadow's Light is not really what you want to see. Is this is this legal to activate Rock with the Vanquisher when you don't have a monster in your graveyard? Let's check. Let's read up on it's, Rock with the Vanquisher again. It seems very suspicious. So, suspicious, I mean, you can special summon one from your hand. Probably that's the effect you're going to activate here, right? Uh, maybe that's the effect you activated, yeah. Yeah, chaining Hello. the Zeus, and then on resolution, you'll be able to get the uh, monster out of your hand here, and then get a trigger effect off the Raisin. Okay, that, that, that makes Seems me less Ryan. suspicious. And he definitely have one in his hand, being the Caesar. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, that also takes care, of course, of the entire field that Ludger has, and I think the last card in Ludger's hand is just going to be the Shadow's Light, which is not going to be able to turn around, and therefore, Lucas and Vanquish Soul are taking down here game number one. That is pretty impressive. And he did not even have like that also powerful dimension shifter that's obviously in this deck since the beginning of days. He did not have there can be only one, which is also great versus Dragon Link. So he just has done it with engine, honestly. Yeah, that I mean sometimes it can happen that if you, you don't have a great hand, but also your opponent doesn't have a great hand either, so you kinda get away with it. So yeah. we saw this with really new cool card, Shadow's Light, but it seems to suffer maybe from the same kind of issue that Dragon Link is having being so dependent on the normal summon. Yeah, it like when was the last time I saw Dragon Link just losing to a single Book of Moon? I, I cannot remember it honestly. Yeah, that I mean, was it, can, it can happen like that just with so many consistency hits over multiple Forbidden Limited lists. I think it's uh, proving to show why it wasn't even in our top like six 
popular cards for this yeah, weekend, true. so it's it's kind of just hashtag fallen off. Yeah, it does, it does. It does really look like that, but I think we definitely ha don't have to or cannot rule out Ludger here just yet. I know him, he's from Berlin, he has been really winning multiple OTS championships over the last couple of weeks, so he has really been performing well with the deck. He knows the deck inside out, so I'm very, very sure that he might be able to come back from this year. Basti, I thought it was going to be the Spanish. I didn't think you were you were. I can team still Germany. support the German players, though. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm, of course, uh, a member of the community myself, right? <laughs> There's a lot of uh, gas and dragon link provided that we can hopefully not open a hand like that. I mean, you can see like you know, something like Boral End is still an absolutely fantastic card, right? Like, totally. It's, it's 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 really difficult for so many of these decks to out. So. Uh, ending on something like, you know, the seals, the borrow, and even just seals by itself against Vanquish was really, really strong. Bouncing normal summons is quite rough. Yeah. But again, there's so many cool ways for uh, for Lucas to extend, just incorporating all of those different engines. And, you know, Beastial's help going second. Uh, I think he's playing a lot of hand traps in his side deck as well, right? Um, we see Drone Lockboard yeah, in his side deck, one. which is a decent one against Vanquish Soul for sure. One card I'm kind of curious about is Full Force Virus. Is that going to be a card you side in against the Vanquish Soul deck? Does it make sense? What is I it, the uh, 25 defense and lower one? Um, uh, no, it's 15 defense and lower. 15 defense? Yes. I indeed. feel like that's. I think the they, Vanquish Soul. They have quite high defense, don't they? I was Mad Love. Okay. I can double check. We'll just uh, look up the Vanquish Soul cards. Mad Love definitely has 2 So Bailey's is 1 5. Uh, Mad Love 2K. Heavy Borger 1 5. Oh, maybe 1 5 is a magic and number. And Raisin is also 1 5. So it actually kind of is the magic number for like the best ones of them, the starter ones of them. So maybe we are going to see that one coming in. And besides that, no like crucial going first cards. Dimensional Barrier, of course, is 1. But again, the deck is kind of problematic because it doesn't really rely on Exceed summoning. It's mainly uh, Link summoning. Also, all the main deck monsters are super strong, so you can only just win with the main deck monsters, I think, personally. If you would have seen the Super Heavy Samurai engine, maybe Dimensional Barrier would look better because obviously when there is Synchro summoning going on, but I think he revealed it at some point with one of the effects, right? Yeah, there's a good chance he revealed the, uh, the Soul Piercer in his Yeah, hand. yeah, probably. Probably that happened, but now we don't have to question it anymore. As the players are ready, let's get into the action of Game 2 here in our Round 9 feature match at YC's Dortmund. Because a deck like Dragon Link has been around for so long, people are prepared for it, people are knowledgeable of its interactions, its key choke points. Uh, whereas something like Vanquish Soul, while we have seen it in and out of success over the last couple of months, it's still maybe sort of always just been in the precipice of the meta, you know, sort of uh, on the outskirts. And I, I think that for that reason, um, will Ludger be able to identify those key points of interaction for the deck? Will he know? what the best cards are in his side deck. You know, I, I, I would assume if you're preparing your side deck for a YCS like this, you're probably not going to be familiar with your exact patterns and uh, key cards you'd be bringing in against, you know, the 11th best deck or something, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point, because I, I feel like Vanquish Soul is, is quite far down. You've got a lot of decks to prepare for. I mean, it made top eight at the World Championship, guys. Please keep it up for Vanquish Soul. It's not that bad. I well, mean, Dragon Link go first. So. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true, for sure. But, I mean, looking at the side deck of Lucas as well, like, he seems to be pretty well prepared for the Dragon Link matchup because I see a dragon which is very powerful against the deck, which is Fantastical Dragon Phantasme, which is kind of having a comeback lately. It's, uh, it's pretty good versus Unchained. It's also decently well against Rescue Ace, and it's also decent versus uh, the good old Dragon Link deck, of course. Are we just going to throw it onto the first Link Summon here? Because I think I spotted this Lucas opening hand here. I think it depends on how risky you want to be, right? Because you can get a lot of value once you establish, you know, something like Romulus, Pisty. Um, but I don't know if you want to wait that long, and it looks like Lucas is not going to let it get that far. And I mean, we have other good cards to draw into, because in the side deck of Lucas, there's also Nibiru, which is a super powerful card, of course. And we saw the Bestias already in his main deck, so you definitely also want to draw into those. It's one of the coolest advantage of Phantasme ever since it was first released uh, around about 2019, I want to say. Uh, being able to cycle and fix your hand so that you can, you know, take out the cards that maybe aren't so good going second or try and draw into more disruption. Really powerful card and also a little bonus effect on the field as well for targeting protection. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious about it because it's a card you kind of always love to have and activate. It just kind of feels good. But I feel like now I, Thrust and Talents are so popular. I'm, I'm curious about including it because I feel like it, it, it's, it's a good card and it, it's definitely like going to 
help you win and it's going to help you fix your hand a bit, but it's not it's not a hugely impactful hand trap. It's not like a Nibiru where if you resolve Nibiru, you're going to have a massive impact on the game. So maybe you think it's worth giving well, up the opportunity. Question: the Do you like something like Ash these days? Ash can be very very impactful though against cards like Branded Fusion and Pot of Prosperity and so on. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean that's kind of the uh, the trade off you take in this uh, this kind of format, right? Like with something like Thrust and Talents being such impactful cards, it it always feels kind of scary to just play hand traps in your deck that aren't super impactful. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that, this is a really important. Oh, okay, oh right. My. <laughs> we are just going bestial after Matt. bestial again. So I was about to mention one of the downsides of uh, Bestials here is that because you're giving your opponent a monster that, you know, you, you because you control a monster, now you've turned on the quick effect of the Bestials in the Dragon Link matchup, so actually working out kind of poorly there but, for Luther. Yeah, so that's another downside already of the yeah. Phantasm. Yeah, but, but this is definitely matter. a good card to continue here for Lutger because he has access to the baby dragons. There is the white dragon. And that is definitely going to be a starter here for sure, going into the Pisti and probably going to link up into Romulus and potentially even more than. I like the way that Lucas is kind of staking himself as the dragon player here because he's got more dragons in play <laughs> than Luca on his first turn. Mathematically accurate at this point in time. Yeah, but I think he will get there. I think Ludger will catch up, honestly. And I mean, look, there's already a pretty Ooh, big dragon, empty. so at least there's the biggest dragon now on the field of Ludger for now. You know what I'd really like to see? I'm pretty sure you can summon from your hand with Red MD, so maybe you maybe summoning out that Bestial Magna, but getting a search, and then you can summon the Lubellion. Ah, uh, but having the Magnamut as an interruption in your hand is also pretty valuable. Yeah, but it will search a Drusworm or whatever. That, that's another. Yeah, it just sort of replaces itself. Fair. I do, I do quite like that. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to continue with the Lebellion effect. Uh, we haven't seen too much of Lebellion this weekend, but uh, started turning into a bit of a classic engine at this point for Dragon Link. The regained by itself can just generate so much advantage. Oh, there's the Romulus. So for a second that forward, are we just going to do good old Seals Pass? <laughs> but we have so far decided against it, but maybe we're still ending up in that position. It's still yeah. possible. It's so rare to see it, because I think when, whenever you can make a seal, you can make a Romulus and go a little bit further with the Dragon Ravine. True, true. We sure. still have a lot of gas in the tank here, because we can just discard the Magnemite, and then the Regained on the opponent's turn can bring it back. But yes. actually, Ludger choosing to just hold it for the opponent's turn. So we are... Oh, Ooh. we're sending Valevian here. And I mean, there already is a Cypher in the graveyard since we started with that. So I think Ludger... He even has two options here, because he might as well destroy the Magnamut and the Phantasmai on the field, as they are quite scary, they are quite big. Yeah, uh, and I think the most important thing as well is that if you leave bodies up, it threatens your uh, seals, because it's so weak in terms of its attack. So they can kind of just go battle phase and force it out, but yeah, I quite like that idea of just clearing the field and setting up the seals after. Yeah, so we also, of course, now get to trigger the regain, draw another card, and I think I saw a Nocto Vision Dragon, which has not been super popular anymore lately, but it's still a super strong card, which makes you draw into more cards later on. If you get to summon it, though, does he even have a way to summon out another Dark Dragon there? Oh, okay, I mean, that's a Dark Monster, at least, with the Dark. Oh, are you, are you seeing what oh, I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That he Magnemut is being destroyed and coming back. Yep. On as a kind of zombie on the, yes, on the wrong side this. of the field. Mm -hmm. I love this. So that's a light monster, that's a dark monster, and another dark monster. So we are going to destroy, and we don't even need to use our own Magnamut when we can just use the opponent's one. Look, that Magnamut now in the graveyard, but not for long, as Lutka wants to have it. This dragon deck, just it just keeps on going. It's a, it's a gift that keeps on giving. I think sometimes you can see just the difference between uh, game one and game two, right? Like that That's kind of how Dragon Link sometimes ends up. You either have everything or you lose to a single disruption, like a Book of Moon. Yeah. I think, yeah, just getting that first card in, in play into the graveyard is so, so valuable. So we keep triple on linking. Burst. There's okay. Triple Burst. And do we finally... Yeah, there he is, the Noctovision Dragon. Okay, so we do get Boral end at an absolute minimum, unless we do want to really focus on the seals. And I do think seals is just a really strong card against Vanquish Souls. Boral end is a pretty good card overall too, though. I think. Yeah, <laughs> did, we, sure. did we end up with any rockets in graveyard? That's a question, though? right? I think there aren't any. Oh yeah, no, that you're right. I oh. kind of wanted to like reach out my hand and Ooh. open Lucas Graveyard to check if there was a rocket. We can't negate I can't now. Remember. Yeah. Okay, so we do draw with the Nocto. I mean, he might have one. I'm not. I'm not sure. He's got a recharger in the hand, I suppose. Did we top deck that, or 
He must have uh, yeah, already he, he had it, otherwise. That. I think he's going off the knock phase We're going now, end yeah. phase for Drewsworm. So I don't know how much that Boral and Dragon there is going to do. So now both <laughs> basically uh, simultaneously going into the deck, resolving their Magna Moods, which were both Lucas Magna Moods, <laughs> basically. But <laughs> still, they are going to end up searching on the one hand a Drewsworm. And for Lucas, we're going to grab the Valias, which to me totally does not look like a dragon, but in fact is a dragon. <laughs> And the borrow end, remind me, is it it can't be dis targeted by monster effects? Targeted or destroyed by... Or destroyed. Yeah, it's it's really, really strong. Because... Uh, loses to an Imperm, though, potentially, off yeah, the top. Lucas's deck is... I mean, he's running the Super Heavy Samurai engine, so it's there's a ton of monsters in his deck. Yeah, I, yeah, I think absolutely. there's hardly any... Um, the thing I'm worried about, though, is like Lutger just doesn't have a negate on this borrow end. It's just a large monster, and I guess he's going to try and just... Yeah, the, with I, I, look, he's smiling into the camera. I think he just realized while Lucas was looking through his graveyard that there is no rocket monster in there. Let's see if he can actually uh, pick that up and notice and take advantage of it. I'm sure that's kind of what he was looking for there, and that's a good start. There is this time the good Super Heavy Samurai card. It's Vakaushi, the one and only. It's going to activate its effect to special summon itself to the field. And I think we're going to activate Big Bankai. There he is. Yeah, he's got this, these powerful cards like Barrel End and Regain, but Graveyard just not quite set up to make use of them at the moment. True, not even the Magna Mood is in the Graveyard now, so that Branded Regain reboy, uh, Branded Regained Reborn effect is not that powerful. This is why I feel like I would have preferred to go with the line of Dragon Ravine discarding the Magna Mood that was resolved without effect because of the opponent's Magna Mood. Yeah. And then in that sense, you can send the Absoriter, and then that gives you Tracer access, um, and then you'd be able to end on a Barrel End with an actual negate. Um, so I, I feel like that may have been a better option for Ludger, but we're here now and uh, we're just going to have to see how well we can contend with a Boral End untargetable, indestructible monster by card effects. Yeah, it's always uh, it's difficult to like not just go for it. I think sometimes your eyes just light up when you realize you can take your opponent's Magnum. <laughs> it's yeah, just totally. such a fun it thing to do, so isn't good. it? It looked so good. It looked so, so promising for sure. So we do end up searching the Soul Gaia booster through the big Bankai. Then we equipped it and we specialed it to the field. So we now have two level four monsters and one of them is a tuner. So if we want to go for Synchro 8 here, we are totally capable of doing that. It would, for example, be a Psy Frame Lord Omega. Haven't seen that one in a while. And uh, the other option would be Axel Synchro Stardust Dragon, which doesn't look too promising because there's no level two available to him. I'm just looking at it, the extra deck for Lucas. What deals with the, with the Barland? Um, Zeus, potentially? Yeah, Zeus, but there's no way to attack with an XYZ and have it survive, right? I mean... But even so, Zeus just feels very unpleasant, like... Yeah, you, I agree. You have to go up your whole field? I'm just... I'm curious, well, what is... I'm not sure how Lucas is dealing with this, because he's, he's, he's not certain himself the way he's been handling these cards. He sort of fanned out the Axel and then decided that, no, we're actually not going to overlay, and then now it looks like we're separating the cards again. <laughs> and we are looking for Phoenix, and that Phoenix could even be Colinked. It is very cool, yeah, to have yep, a nice Colinked yep, monster. Yeah, there it goes. Does he play Underworld? That's the uh -huh. wrong way around. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> Bakashi wants to go to the graveyard there. <laughs> No, there's no Underworld Goddess. Yeah, that was a nice call, though, because that's a card that's been picking up in popularity a lot, specifically, totally. I think, to deal with uh, ex Pearly Noir. And I guess as a side effect, Boral Savage. Honestly, I think Zeus might be the only option he has. And How do you use Zeus, though, when you're... Like, your, your Eximos was just, is just going to die, right? Yeah, you, so, so you would have to have a way to go into an Exceed and then go into another Exceed. And I mean, the Vakaushi was free, so we have not even normal summoned so far. So I think there's a way, but we just gave up two of our level 4 monsters for a Nightmare Phoenix. So I don't really know whether we can still get there. Does, uh, does Dempsey have any protection? I feel like some of the battle in Boxer effects... Oh, we're just coming over here. Yeah, so... Uh Welcome back to the table. Uh, our players are just in the middle of a uh, judge call here. Probably to verify just exactly what happened. As you noticed, I think what occurred there was he actually picked up his cards, began to overlay, and then separated yeah. them. So we'll You kind of want to be clear on that for sure. Yeah, so there might be just an issue here to make sure that uh, 
Link 2 was legal or whether they are going to be made to commit to the XC summon instead. So that's probably what our judges are just clarifying right now. Yeah, but that was a pretty good point of view. Like, battling boxers, by their name, they sound like they would be good at, like, fighting and maybe survive a battle with a Borderlands okay. Dragon. But reading the battling boxer damn say, I don't think there's any kind of uh, okay. battle destruction <laughs> or just, protection. I'm showing my age here. I remember when the original battle in boxes yeah. were released. And I think between them, they had a lot of ways of not being destroyed. Uh, so I was just wondering totally. if Dempsey also had a similar effect. I mean, I kind nope. of... Yeah. He's I mean, the, do you remember the irony of Glassjaw? Was that it? Like, if it's the targeted for an attack, it destroys itself? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Boxer, remember them that well. Dem Dempsey actually is one of the new and cool kids. He, he doesn't really, play with the old guys he anymore. Doesn't, he doesn't box, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I All mean. right, well, type one in the chat if you remember Lee Diok. I mean, that, that was uh, I remember. That, that, was, that the was the one I was thinking of. Okay, yeah. okay. That was yeah. a nightmare. That was a horrible to get, horrible to get yeah, over. Yeah. Speaking of, I used to go into... Uh, I played Evil Swarm at the time. I used to go Evil Swarm Bahamut, the steel one. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a how you that, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. you eat uh, out the uh, lead yoke. Oh, but we are back to the table, so it seems like we have figured out everything, and that Phoenix still ended up on the field. Yeah, so not being forced to commit to the XE summon as they did initially, go for that link, um, and yeah, they're gonna destroy the regained and we draw, draw a card. card. Ooh, I think we picked up Rysar there, which is nice because it's an additional level four monster, which could end up in a way to Zeus, but. Oh, wait, like, if we have Nightmare Phoenix on the field... Uh, only your Colic monsters. Only Colic monsters that you thought. control I had can't that be thought, destroyed by battle. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> might protect things from being destroyed by battle. We'll have Link XC monsters soon, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean like uh, Sprite Gigantic? Uh, yeah, true, there is one, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, but can you Colic him? Uh, no. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. stake your soul, everyone! Uh, we are revealing a fire monster which we just have drawn with the Kashira Rysart, and we are going to search through this into our probably just raisin, I would think. Yeah. I mean, none of the Vanquish yeah. Soul monsters target your opponent's monsters, but the only one, they either destroy them or try and bounce the monster with the lowest defense, but uh, Boral Savage does, does uh, Boral End even, does not have any defense points, so you nope. can try and argue that uh, it's got the lowest defense, but it's I'm got not four sure, defense. I'm not sure a judge would back you up. <laughs> it doesn't have, no, <laughs> sorry, fair. my joke didn't even work there, it's got five defense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Dr. Madloff coming onto the field now. Previously searched by the Raisin. So there's more and more monsters coming to the field. And I think, like, now we are at the situation where we could have gone for a Zeus line. Because we had the option to go for rank 4 in main 1. And then now there was also two more uh, level 4 monsters. So that would have worked, but now it doesn't anymore. On the other hand, I think we drew into the Rysard through the draw effect of Nightmare Phoenix. Therefore, maybe we didn't even have that option before. So I don't think we can blame Lucas really here so far. I like that. Uh, it's quite an uncommon thing to do, so maybe you don't think of it immediately. But I, I like your suggestion there. Yeah. So you can, you can make one rank 4, attack with it, and then make another rank 4 later, and then level that up into a Zeus. Because usually, you will, every time you think of just... Uh, you know, overlaying over the, the the monster that battled, but it doesn't actually care which monster true, battled. True, true. And I mean, we saw such a battle. powerful line by Lucas there in game one, right? He even has the option to go Merrymaker, Sagas, search out Irregulars, and then go Zeus. So, like, he would have gotten still so much value out of that. So I think I would have really liked it overall. I feel and like he's definitely sort of crumbling under the pressure here, realizing that he's in such a commanding position because there's no regained available to special summon. The Boral End doesn't have a negate. So realistically, if he can just out Boral End, he's kind of got this one in the bag, but it seems like we may have potentially uh, done a bit of a misstep here as we're, we're just kind of struggling to deal with this Boral End, just putting guys on the field, which admittedly isn't too bad in and of itself. I mean, it's hard to suggest that someone can out advantage dragons, but it looks like uh, Lucas is doing a decent job of it. Well, I mean, Boralend will make short work of these guys, right? It can attack all of your opponent's monsters. Yeah, it can, all right. I mean, <laughs> That, that works, we can actually attack, but the, the big problem is like Borland can, can just not be destroyed by battle. So, yeah, you can try, but it ends up not getting you anywhere. And I think we're Lucas packing just up, it right? Up, right? I'm amazed if that's if Lucas has conceded there. It, like, both of them don't really. I mean, Lutger looks a little more happy, right? I think Lutger has won this game number two, but I'm not even 100% sure. But okay. yeah, I mean, Luca, was... Luca certainly does not look super <laughs> happy. So that does look like we are going to have a game number three here. And the score is even from here on. So maximum pressure now even for game number three in the last round of the day. And 
they both were already shaking here in game two, and now the pressure is even getting up a little bit more. I'm Perhaps not a matchup that they're familiar with, you know? I, I guess a Vanquish Soul and then Dragon Link with Vanquish Soul. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's not something they've really practiced or something. It's, it, there, there was a lot of just strange decision making, I feel like. Uh, it's yeah. late. <laughs> That's I'm just explanation so for all you of it. You just concede to that, like. Does, does Luka just say, okay... Maybe, you, well, maybe you, he's realized he just doesn't have an out, right? But, like, can you stop... Like, if he just makes one game three, is he just going to concede again? Like... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think the idea maybe is potentially, you know, you've got to pay attention to the clock. Yeah. And it's sometimes better to, you know, lose the battle, win the war, and then you can guarantee that you go first in game three. Um, but I guess, you know, Van Crusoe is a deck that does kind of well in time, doesn't it? That is true. It does have that cheeky burn effect. What's his name? Uh, Heavy Borgia. <laughs> oh, is that how you say it? Okay. That's pretty what funny. What would yeah. you call it? Well, I just Heavy Borger. Bur burger. <laughs> Heavy bur it's, it's Borger. De it's definitely an O. Bor not a U. I would Borgor. say Borger. Borger. Pretty Borger. certainly. Yeah. But I mean, let's check out the going first cards here for Lucas. How do you in general like Dimensional Barrier versus Dragon Link? I mean, it has Link in its name, which is kind of <laughs> not great for the Dimensional Barrier, but still there's quite a bit of Synchro Summoning happening, right? Yeah, if only it said Link on it, then it would be a perfect card, you know? There's like it's not spellbound. <laughs> There's like a world where you like try and commit to some sort of like dispater line, and then you kind of get caught out with something like a dimensional barrier. But yeah. not something I'm really a fan of. I think uh, Lucas's engine is quite well suited for this matchup, and if you bring in those draws on top of it, Agreed. I think he's going to be in a decent spot when he gets to go first. I'm, yeah. I'm also looking at the the one copy of there can be only one. Maybe he misunderstood the text um, um, of the card. Maybe he was like, you can only play no. one of it. You can only play one. one. Yeah, you of course, he misunderstood <laughs> that one for sure. I, I think that must be uh, the explanation. That, yeah, because that's an absolutely devastating card against Dragon Link. I don't, I don't totally think generally, I don't know why you wouldn't play that at three in Vanquish Soul. It seems like a really strong just, you know, I can understand not maining it because, you know, you lose the dice roll, it doesn't really, you know, help you too much potentially if you can stick a field, but going first, I mean, side decking, that seems incredible. Me, personally, I even like it going second. Honestly, it Do seems you? so impactful right now. There is so many different decks. I think it's just a great pick overall. But, I mean, this card is certainly going to come in. Let's see what else is coming in and whether he's going to be able to find a raise in this guy because game, uh, game one he was lacking access to that. But maybe now in game three he's going to summon it again. So let's go for the last game of the day in round number nine here at YC's Dortmund. Our players are ready, and uh, Lucas is uh, most likely going to want to go first here. Fist bump, nice uh, sportsmanship as we round out the end of another YCS day one. Oh yeah, new season, off to a good start. Let's see whether it still is going to be a good start for Lucas here. Oh, that's a beautiful start oh, for Lucas. Oh, the Kaoshi once again, lovely, lovely. I can also see a copy of Stake Your Soul in hand as well. Is he going to stake his soul again? He's That's a pretty high soul. stake at this point. Like <laughs> double staking your soul. That's pretty heavy. Super heavy, I could say. <laughs> oh, please stop. <laughs> I thought Leo wasn't here. You know? <laughs> I kind of took some classes by him. <laughs> so now this time we can search out the soul piercer, also summoning it out. Okay, actually not going to overlay instead. Uh, looking like that. Omega might be the uh, one we're going for here. Oh, yes, it is indeed. Has been a while since I saw this card. Definitely haven't seen it yet today. But we are also, of course, going to activate the Vakaoshi back into the Pendulum scale. So we might even see some Pendulum summoning here. Oh, that's cool, actually. I hadn't really thought of Pendulum summoning the... Uh the Vanquish Souls. The Vanquish yeah. Souls. Yeah, I was wondering, I was kind of, my brain was just whirring for a second there because I was like, don't you normally not have to use the normal summon <laughs> when you do this, uh, you know, the, the play off of uh, Super Heavy Samurais? But I guess in this case, he decided he would rather get a, his pendulum scale set up and get an extra search than keep the normal summon. Yeah. The question is, does he have a uh, Vanquish Soul to be able to actually access the rock? Yeah, that's the thing. Going? Uh, he definitely has Stake Your Soul in his hand, so he'd just need a Fire Monster and then he's good to go. But yeah. if he didn't have it, then like almost certainly he would have made Battle Inbox a Dempsey rather than Omega, right? So. I agree. So there comes the Omega. What is he going to get out of the hand there? The cool thing with Omega is both players will see and know what that was. And that was a Nocto Vision here, which is not going to be in the hand of Ludger anymore. Pretty strong card to have as an extender when you uh, actually manage to stick a dragon, but that's the problem. It's uh, looking quite hard. 
I think and Jason Ludger's hand, if he's going to be able to stick one here on him. Okay, we do, okay, have, we do have a fire monster, and it's the Rysart, so I think we're far away from being done here. I think there's still way more things to happen. Raisin coming down, of course. I think we're going to see the full combo, shall we say, of uh, what you really want to try and do with this deck here. Omega ripping a card, we've got access to the Vanquish Souls, and uh, the Super Heavy Samurai's bridging that gap really nicely as well. I mean, we can even we don't even need to lock ourselves into Exceed Monsters here because we can just Pendulum Summon out the Rysart. So there are plenty of ways, I think, here for Lucas to do a whole lot of stuff, honestly. I'm interested, like, is Omega really the premium thing you can do, like, as a Synchro slash Rank 4? I mean, Once upon a time, there was a card called Magical Dragon. Not true. in this deck, probably, but, <laughs> yeah, I miss him. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on the other hand, there is... Abyss Dweller in his extra deck, which is of course amazing with all the tier decks running around today, but it's also not bad for his Dragon Link, is it? Yeah, I could have considered using it. It shuts uh. off a few cards. It's not like super duper, but it's it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's like Absol Router, Cyphered, Noctovision, which is not even there anymore. So. And the, the Baby Dragons. True, those as well. So. There, there are actually that, quite a few that things. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Also, so, Saronir. It's annoying enough that you'll notice it, I think, if you're playing dragons yep. into a Dweller. So, Obviously, something he would have prepared for the uh, Unchained matchup. Extremely important oh, in that. Oh, that is a Pendulum Summon now. I think this might be the first Pendulum Summon of the day, actually. And we are summoning out four <laughs> monsters. That is quite the Pendulum Summon there. First Pendulum Summon of the season. Yeah, indeed it is. <laughs> um, am I missing something? Do, don't the uh, scales of the Super Heavy Samurais go to four when you have a spell in your grave? Or is that not all of them have that effect? Um, so Benkei does not have that effect. Let me check with the good old... Uh, Wakaoshi. Wakaoshi yeah, as well. Yeah, it might just be their other effect. Some of them have this effect that... Uh, both of them don't, uh, I both can confirm. Don't. Okay, maybe it's another Super Heavy Samurai that has an effect that... They they obviously don't want you to have. I think a spell the pendulum ones grave. specifically are the ones that kind of don't really interact with the graveyard, right? Okay, no, true, I think true. there are. Yeah, there's a couple that uh, have this effect. So this time, not. that's another synchro aid, is it? It is. Is Axel there a level synchron. two monster in the graveyard though? Yeah, the, oh, uh, the, the bike. Yeah. Oh, the bike was in there already. So we do get to summon out a synchro ten then later on. Yep, there comes the bike. Really strong opening here, honestly. Like this is as good as a combo you can hope to achieve with uh, with Vanquish Soul here. We've got the Baron as the Omni Negate. We've looped the card out the hand. We've got Raisin online. This is really, really powerful. Yeah, um, I guess we can also make the Merrymaker. Yeah, true. Still more to come. That is just amazing what we're seeing right here. So there is the rank four, and yeah, it's either Dweller or just the Merrymaker you were talking about. Those are the options that he has here, and I, I like both of them. And I think I like the Merrymaker even more, honestly. Well, I was actually going to suggest that I prefer the Dweller, so you have to be the, <laughs> you have to be the tiebreaker uh, here, Tom. <laughs> okay. okay, good call, Tom, good call. You really saw that one coming. I, You've got I, taste. I, yeah, I, I just saw the, uh, you know, it, it already... I mean, you, yeah, you already said it before he was summoning it. So there's Sagas now, of course. Saga is going to add that Regulus. I mean... I can see, though, uh, why you would like the Dweller more, because Dweller does play around cards like Dark Ruler and more and stuff like that more. Mm. But so, like, if we're just summoning Negate after Negate after Negate, that is going to be punished pretty hard by Dark Ruler. But looking through all of the decks we've already seen today, I don't think a single person we had in the featured match actually was playing Dark Ruler today. Yeah, it's not been very popular yeah. despite the fact that it's just such a powerful go second card, but oh, interesting. We've picked up a Pankratops on the top there. Ooh, that would have been a nice card to Pendulum Summon out as well. This is truly like 101 interruptions from Lucas. They're just showing us the Druid Worm in hand as well. Oh, and also two set cards. Let's see, does Ludger have a way to deal with this? But Pankratops is definitely not the worst start ever. So one of the advantages of Pankratops is that it acts as a sort of two-for-one, because you can beat over something and then force something out with the tribute effect. Um, but it's uh, a little bit rough here, because there's nothing we can actually attack over. I was going to so. say, you could beat over something if your opponent's board wasn't huge. Yeah. <laughs> like, everything on the on the field there is gold. Okay, seems like we are negating with Regulus and then using the Soul Piercer Graveyard effect there. I think there's a Talent in the hand, so that's going to be step two to... Uh, Deal with Baron, and then from there, well, 
We'll see if there's enough gas in the tank for Ludger. I mean, it's a good start because we deal with both Omni Negates. Okay, it's oh, a quick launch first. I was going to say, I'd really like um, to deal with the with the Baron yeah, first, and then you can take it with talents. Fair, fair, very fair point. And that should, you know, then deal with another card. You can destroy it. Well, I'm just worried because then your follow-up feels a bit weak here. If you uh, don't get to resolve this quick launch, but it looks like Lucas actually let the quick launch resolve, which means that we can get a light and dark in the graveyard. Ooh, but one very important factor that both players definitely have to have in mind here is the fact that there's only four more minutes left in this, so the one that is going to do damage here first is in a pretty good position as he will be uh, in the lead in terms of life points, and that is pretty crucial at this point here. Ludger is definitely going to do damage with this... Uh, what's the name? I've forgotten. Rocket Recharger with its zero attack. I believe in him. <laughs> It looks he's scary. I really sure. do love that he's he, both games. He summons that thing in attack mode. Yeah, it's just 21 defense is just cosmetic. I've never put it in attack mode in my life, to be honest. Ever. <laughs> it's a power <laughs> move. It's just a power move by Ludger there. You know, you can boost it by 300 with the oh, that's boot true. Sector, actually, right? boot sector. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget. All right. Uh, checking the graveyard here to see what kind of uh, bestial line we're gonna go with. But first of all, in the order of business, we're gonna go Striker Dragon. Uh, does he play Scarlight at all? He's he in his is siding it, yeah. and I would assume in the game free scenario where you're getting closer and closer to time, that this card probably found its way into the extra deck there. Yeah, so I mean, if we can find a way to uh, not get uh, disrupted enough to the point we that we can actually go for it. and destroyed with Ooh. the Baron de Fleur. Now that, of course, makes our talents life. But what are we even doing? Do we want to take the Baron? Because from there on, I don't think we can move on a whole lot. But we do decide yeah. to take it. You no, know, this is really strong, actually. We can force something out with the Baron. Uh, we can use the Baby Dragon in the hand. Oh, we do have a Baby Dragon? Yeah, yeah. We can summon that Wyver Burster. And then keep extending like that. Go into Pisty, into a Link 2. There's um, a slight misstep here. Because... Well, this is a big misstep because you can just flip up the Baron. And in fact, that oh. gives you the negate back, so... Oh, you are absolutely right. That would be insanity if he realizes. But yes, you are totally correct there, oh, Tom. no. This is just a classic... Does he know, Lud Ludger didn't notice. I feel like this has happened like a, a million times when you play. You, you always do it. When someone, you, someone takes your monster and then you book it, you're like, oh, I can't have that. And then they just yeah. flip it up and you're like... Classic what? case of <laughs> does he know, though? It really <laughs> depends on does, does he know. Does he know? Does, does he know? He know? <laughs> I think if he knew, he would have probably have probably uh, flipped already it by did now, it, right? right? Yeah. I, I agree. Before you commit, I also really would have liked to play the Druid Worm while the you didn't have any monsters on your field, and that would prevent your opponent from interrupting you with Druid Worm. Yeah, I think might be uh, getting a little bit flustered knowing that there's so little time on the clock now. Good point. Good point. So well, a decent way way to go here. So. The issue is that we can go into a Link 2, we can get access to Tracer, but it's going to be impossible to summon now because the Striker Dragon was negated and destroyed by the Baron, so I don't know how we're going to make a Synchro A even if we do get to Scarlight. It's going to be tough, that's for sure. For a second, I was thinking, are you even allowed to flip summon non-Dragon monsters while Pisty is on the field? But you are, it's okay, only for it's special summons. It's not going to be on the field forever, so... <laughs> flip summon Baron. New so tech. Maybe he's just holding it for like maximum effect. Yeah, I what? think Ludger was looking at Dark there, but Dark, of course, is not a card you can summon when there's Pisty on the field. One other like kind of nice optimization maybe against the Vanquish Soul deck is to put your monsters, if you can, in columns where there's n where that are already taken, yeah. because the Soul Rosin can destroy monsters in its column, and there's lots of ways to summon a Soul Rosin during your opponent's turn. So that Baron de Fleur, maybe if it was in the middle oh, monster. Okay. Don't go for we, dark, don't we, go for okay. dark. We can't uh, make dark, uh. we can't make Romulus, we can't make seals. Why yeah, you can't make you can make Romulus. Yeah, He's dark locked, doesn't he? Oh, oh you're right, actually. We started with Tracer. Oh no, we just yeah. passed back do, over. Do we have to give the Baron back as well, maybe? Oh, no. Yeah, he really did not know. But now he has to be quick. 30 <laughs> seconds left. Lucas has to find a way to quickly do he damage here. He has to go to the battle phase. Omega comes back, gets a card back oh, to the hand, put everything I mean, into attack mode, go to the we battle phase. We are in battle phase. That is damage. Damage has been connected. Woo! Lucas is happily taking the lead here in this game free. After Lutger just did not know to flip that Baron <laughs> back up. He didn't. He really did not. Really? And now the negate is face up again, is, is alive again as well. 
Yeah, I don't think uh, the, the, there's going to be time for Luka to come back into this game. There's so many things that Lucas can do. No, it's a scoop there. And there's a handshake, and Lucas has been victorious in the final round of day one of YCS Dortmund. Wow, that was very nerve-wracking for him. I felt like in the end of game two, he must have been really kicking himself, yeah. but he's managed to pull back together, hasn't he? Yeah, that was like just the most nerve-wracking game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I've seen for a while. That <laughs> just when you're... The, the, the feeling that goes through you when you've got all of these cards and your opponents just said, okay, here's my one monster. <laughs> and you've got all of these cards in your whole deck and you have you can't figure out how to deal with it. it just It's so frustrating, you know? Yeah. I think it was also a power move by Lucas just booking the Baron and just <laughs> confidently <laughs> sitting there, just being like, yeah, I booked it, so there's no way for you to continue, right? I, I don't think that was a bluff, you know? I think that was a, just a little... Uh, I mean, it doesn't have an effect extra, the Dust Devil, that you can't flip the face up or anything Let's like double that, check. Maybe we, we blamed them for that, so maybe there is an extra effect, but I'm pretty sure there's not, no. Pretty sure there is not, but there and is the uh, Dust Devil, da 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 Nah, yeah, so, uh, it can be flipped, flipped back up. Yeah, so, sure. I mean, uh, this is one of the uh, takeaway lessons that, for those of you at home, can probably observe. You know, you go to a YCS, it's a long day, nine rounds, you know, you're going to be exhausted, it's important to stay hydrated, keep your mental up, and then uh, maybe uh, in a different round, that would have been something that, you know, he would have noticed. Well, yeah. both players maybe could have, yeah. I mean, because, I mean, flipping it, yeah. I, it's just Absolutely. actually, to be honest, this is almost like a, a lesson of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because this is an interaction that seems to happen so frequently. Flip-like yeah. interactions is definitely something people can be weak on. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It doesn't happen very regularly, but when it happens, it's very important. As it would have been very important right here, right there. And actually, it's good for both players, though, that they found the winner. Because a draw in this one would have been quite icky, because they already both had the draw. So I don't know whether we would have had them in the tournament anymore. But now, of course, Lucas is definitely the... Uh, guy still in competition going strong still in the tournament going into day two but also of course we will go into day two now but we have some final words by our host of course at please end the show for today